Now this is something else. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. We're down at the electric boat section at the Cannes Yachting Festival. And if we're lucky, I'm going to take a ride out on this new Candela C7, the world's first foiling electric boat. So you can see the outboard is already running. I'm just going to hop on board straight away, get myself in, and we can talk a little bit more about it once we're going, because we're just sneaking out for a very quick ride. So amazingly, that engine is running and we're off. It really is as quick as that. There's no noise, there's no idling, just a little whir. And it's a really neat. And this is something you're going to see because down here are where the foil struts live. So it's on adjusting foils that drop down. You can see the housing for them. And when we get going, it'll lift up on those foils and we will literally start to fly. But already you can feel just how different this is. It's such a bizarre feeling. There's almost no noise. There's a little electric whir. You can probably just about hear from that outboard engine. And of course that has to shift up and down as well because when we're on the foils, we still need to keep the propeller in the water. So that's all adjustable too. And perhaps this is a bit of a clue to what we're about to do. This is the first boat I've seen with seat belts built into the seats. This could be very interesting indeed. But in every other respect, it's like a fairly conventional bow riding sports boat. But everything about it is about weight. So you can see it's very lightweight, very refined, carefully thought through, almost a little bit delicate. So everything is as strong as it needs to be, but no stronger. Look at those little supports for the windscreen and a little torpedo. So that's the electric motor showing you what we're doing there. 3.1 kilowatts. We've just eased back a bit. So now we're just barely using any power at all. And then a little bow area here. It's quite a low freeboard. You can see just how low everything is. And a little delicate bow door shuts into place on magnetic hinges and clicks in but you can see there's not a lot of freeboard here but everything you need there's even a little anchor locker just big enough to store the fenders a few lines and the anchor shut that there. Oh, it looks like we've got to wait for the there's a little bridge across the front allowing people to walk across and that swings open and then we get out but gives us a chance to have a little bit more of a look at the boat delicate windscreen carbon fiber you can see the weave on that dashboard oh, yeah oh so we're lifting the foils now are we yes they're coming up now you see ah okay so now you can see the foils rising up see the teeth on this side so it obviously winds down on gears and that enables you to creep into a shallow bay so that you don't draw too much. So we can go in 50, we can navigate in 50 centimetres of water. Really, that's all it draws, 50 centimetres. Fantastic. And what is the cost of this boat? So how we see it here is a list of 265. 265,000 euros. euros. Yeah. Exactly. We have a teak, uh, wooden ground, yeah. and the bimini top, and a yeah. sunbed that I'll show you here. You can just very easily remove this one. Yep. Put it on here. Voila. So you have also a cushion in the middle and you have a very nice and big um, sunbed. Nice. And who makes that motor then? Is it a, is there a torpedo motor under yes, there? Yes, right. it's a deep blue. The so it's a torpedo deep blue. The 50 kilowatt hour. Right. Now if you want to show you again. Yep. Here we are in our menu. So this is our main screen. Yep. We go into menu, retraction, and then combine down. Right. And now they are both moving down the foils. And do you have to do the foils manually or? Yes, the foils up and down manually. Uh, of course, the foils while we are uh, going, they are completely uh, done automatically. Right. So when we're up and riding on the foils, exactly. it then the adjusts the trim. Yes. We have two sensors in the front. You've seen them in the front compartment. Yeah. They're measuring the height uh, on the water. Right. Giving this uh, 
information forward to the software together with the information from the uh, CPU controller, so right. uh, gyroscope and accelerometer, and the software adjusts the foil a hundred times a second. Wow. Yes. So to keep the boat always stable on the water, the foils, we can imagine like my glasses, they are yeah. fixed here with lock pins, so right. moving forward, backward, or one forward, one backward, giving it a twist to the foil as well. Right. And that maintains the sort of level, stable flight. Exactly. At the back we have the rudder yeah. and also the egg foil is um, um, giving the pitch of okay. the bow, so up and down. Also while uh, taking off and landing, yeah. it moves to the back. So it's one big, is it two foils under one here? One foil. One big T-shaped foil yes, joining exactly. these two struts and then another foil on the back of the exactly. engine. If you want, I lift you the back one in foiling mode so you can really see it. Oh, so the engine has gone down now, I can already see that it's down. So now you can see the engine lifting up. So again, that what, gi what gives you the ability to creep into shallow bays. Ah, oh, okay, so now we can see the foil itself. And look at that, a carbon fibre foil all the way down there. Whoa! <laughs> and there's the propeller hidden underneath that foil. So it's like an extended outboard motor and you can see the whole thing twist. So that's what provides the steering. Rather than the head of the motor twisting, it's just the leg and the foil. So that provides the attitude, the planing attitude, so it keeps the bow nice and level. If you go over a wave or it threatens to dive down, then that will twist up and down and give you the nice level ride. And then there's the T-shaped foil between the seats that provides most of the lift but that also twists to make sure, make sure it maintains a level ride. And then just with a simple touch, we go again into foiling mode. Right, so it's one touch, all on the screen, and then everything goes back into position. And the reason for that cost, is that the technology or the battery or the...? The technology. Right. The heart of the boat is the, the software. It's yeah. 100,000 coding lines. Wow. Keeping the, the boat um, on the right angle on, uh, on the water. Yeah, and how many of these have you sold? Up to today we have 31 sold, all the way from San Francisco to the Caribbean, the fjords in Sweden, Finland, to the Alp, uh, lakes in the Alps, yeah. all the way down to um, Dubai. So even though for a small sports boat it's pretty expensive, let's face it, yes, but there but are people who are prepared for the for the experience or for the environment? For or the experience, the environment, and to be, of course, the pioneer in leading in this, uh, with this boat. Yeah. We've been cruising along uh, the biggest yachts in Sardinia, and normally no one cheers to you, and here we're just saying hello, and everyone like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> because they can't hear anything, yeah, it's yeah, flying, yeah, it's, yeah. And also, the other thing is, you have to see the boat, otherwise you don't hear it. Yeah, on. yeah. We got also some, uh, uh, curiosity from military yeah. uh, use because of course you can get very close to someone without uh, ah. being noticed. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's a big point. Proper you, sneaky you, stuff. Yes, exactly. Yeah. If you are on another ship or yeah. something with uh, engine running yeah. and so, you, don't, you won't, you won't yeah. hear the, the boat coming. Okay, and there is some useful storage at the back here, so that lifts up. Where you'd normally find an engine or a fuel tank, there's just storage. So we've got a boat hook, life raft, tools, that's useful, but you can see, so this is all carbon fibre, is it? The whole boat? All, all boat is carbon fibre. So what does the boat weigh without the batteries? We, we weighed it with the batteries yep. because they are fixed on the boat. Yep. It's 1,300 kilograms. 1,300 kilograms, yes. even with the lithium-ion battery? Exactly. So uh, the where is the... itself weighs uh, 90 kilograms, just the hull. 90 kilograms for yes, the hull, just, can just the... By hand, and the batteries are around 260 kilos. That's incredible. Yes. So the hull, whole hull is 90 kilos because yeah. it's all 100% carbon exactly. fibre. Yes. That's amazing. And the batteries are under the deck? The batteries are underneath here. We have the centre of gravity very low. Right. Until here, the hull is a V shape. Yeah. In order, it's still with bigger waves to open them up a little bit. And um, you see also the seats are very low compared yes. to normal, just to have the centre of gravity very low. And. Um, so from here you have the faults and then a very flat aft. Right. And how big is the battery? 40 kilowatt hour. So 40 kilowatt hour battery. The one from uh, Turquido. Right. From BMW i3. Yes. Nice from Turquido and so it's um, 
it's in here. And so your 40 kilowatt hour battery, the engine is? It's 55, kilo, 55 kilowatts so compared to 75 horsepower. Okay. And um, So flat out you've got less than an hour, but the beauty is you don't need to go flat out. Flat out, I would say a little bit more than an hour. Okay. Uh, we see here the, the life consumption. Yeah. With the uh, cruising speed, we are around 0 0.9 kilowatt hour per nautical mile. Right. With maximum power, we are 1.4, 1.5. So it's not even double, so we'd say more than an hour. Okay, so maximum speed should be around 30 knots. 30 knots is maximum right. speed, limited. Yeah. Because then the forces uh, grow exponentially. So okay. the coils would need, to, uh, would need to be reinforced and maybe not be retractable anymore. Okay, so that's why you don't use the full 55 exactly, so kilowatts. Of the, yeah. And also the nice thing is that um, at cruising speed you will see we can talk as we're talking now at 20 yeah. knots without hearing much noise. And range? Range at 20 knots is uh, 50 nautical miles. So 50 nautical miles yes. at 20 knots, and that's the battery is completely flat, or the battery is zero, and we still have a limp mode. Right. To bring you back home, so eight nautical miles at five knots. Okay, so realistically, that's as much as people are ever going to use yes, in a day. Exactly. Yeah. Especially on a boat size like this. Yeah. So you don't want to go more, or, or if you have a big ship more than 50 meters and use it as a tender. Yeah. It's perfect. You get in the harbor, electric flying, yeah. one hears you. And also the appearance is... Uh, and what about recharge? How long does it take to recharge, recharge it? As we have a small battery. It's yeah. uh, charging during the night. Eight okay. hours, ten hours, depending how much uh, power, sh short power you have. But uh, yes, in the night you charge it. Brilliant. Now he's just given me a little demonstration of how all this works. But it's all so well integrated that you can literally just choose a spot on the chart hold and press it and then it will then create a route with all the various waypoints a nice safe route to get you there but crucially it's also plumbed in to the battery so it's telling you it's 5.5 nautical miles and you will get there with 85 percent of your battery remaining so the whole thing is sort of plug and play integrated to make it incredibly simple so although it's very high tech it's actually remarkably simple to use and all the controls are on this screen there's one throttle there's a helm wheel and everything else is on here. It shows you exactly what range you've got, your battery power, consumption, depth, speed, rudder indicator underneath. And this is a little bit of a novelty, I presume <laughs> this is your horizon. This is an uh, artificial horizon that gives you the, the angle of bank when you're turning. Fantastic. So something you'd normally find on an aeroplane, exactly. not so much on a boat. Okay, here you see. Fantastic. Just heading out of the show now, past the super yacht extensions, all these amazing boats. But I'm telling you, I don't think anything is creating as much interest as this. People are just fascinated to know what it is, how it works, what the foils do, is it really electric? There's just a lot of interest in new technology. Is it really possible to build a fun, sporty electric boat? And I think this could well be the first evidence of that. So we're just coming out of the harbour and we're being asked not to speed until we get out of the harbour. So we're just going to poke round, but see we're being tracked by all these other boats. All eager to see what happens. Now we take a straight line and we go full throttle. So here we go. Here we go. Okay, I can feel the bow rising. But at the moment it feels like a conventional planing boat, it just feels like we're getting over the hump. So we're now doing six, oh, and suddenly it's gone quiet. There's suddenly no noise. That is the weirdest feeling. We are now on the foils. The hull is completely clear of the water. We're not miles up. We're probably only about, I don't know, three, three feet up in the air, but there is none of the hull is actually touching the water. So it's incredibly quiet and we're flying over the water. It's the most bizarre sensation. Look at that, we're not even going that fast. So what are we doing? We're doing 21 knots. But we are literally flying above the water. And it's a really eerie motion, a really eerie feeling. Yeah, let's see if we can put the camera over the sides and take a look. Oh my goodness. 
there you can see it, the foil cutting through the water and we are nowhere near the water. That is absolutely astonishing. How cool is that? Now we're doing a nice gentle turn. But because we're above the waves, we're not actually affected by them. Let's see if I can have a little look at what's going on back here. Amazing is that? We are quite literally flying over the water. Now, if you look inside here, you see the parts moving. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, we can just see. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the foils are just moving a little bit backwards and forwards, constantly adjusting the ride. So. It maintains an absolutely level balance. And if we look more pronto, oh my goodness, you feel there's the more push. to come. You absolutely can. So we. And you will hear the water splashing on the, on the hull. Ah, uh, yeah, so now the water is just beginning to flick up. But we are now doing 30 knots. It feels usefully faster. Now it's that really is probably. And look at that, there's just no wake. We're going at 30 knots and we're not creating any wake at all. It's just a little seam of white where the propeller is churning up the water. But we're not sending any waves out at all. And it's also just eerily quiet. It's the only real noise. There's a little hum from the motor, but it's the wind noise that creates more noise than anything else. And a slight tilt as we go into a turn. You can just see it healing a little bit. So we're just easing the speed, we're still on the foils, and then suddenly the back goes down, the front goes down, and now you can hear the water on the hull again. That really is like landing an aeroplane. Exactly. It's quite extraordinary. So am I allowed to have a go at this? Of course. You can. Close to you. So what is the technique? What do I need to know? So have a straight line free. You yeah, see it here I've got the, the, the rudder indicator. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then get a little bit of speed up to five, six knots and yeah. then go full. Okay, so the fours are in position. Rudder straight. Right, up to four knots. So far, so normal. Six knots. And now go for it. Yes. Okay, let's put the throttle all the way forward. Bit of a clunk from the foils as they go down. Now we're at 11 knots and now I can feel we've, okay, we have left the water. We are now flying. My goodness, and the bow comes down again and it almost dips. So we're now flying above the water and some clever computer is doing all the hard work for me because there's no way I'd be able to fly a plane, but I am now flying a boat. We're doing 23 knots using 26 kilowatts and we are flying along it's the most extraordinary feeling it's somewhere between flying and helming a boat but now there's a little bit of a chop here so i'm just going to go through the chop now this would be quite uncomfortable in a normal what we've just gone through it we've just gone over a wake and i didn't even know it was there it was probably a one foot maybe 18 inches and it just passed under the boat without even noticing it. Because the foils are below the level of the chop, there is just no movement. Every now and then with a bigger one, there's a little bit of a splash as it comes up onto the hull, but most of the time, we are just above it all. Here's another big wash. And that computer is working it all out for us. So that is a really amazing piece of technology. There's a big wake here, which in a, I'm telling you, in a 20 something foot boat would be really uncomfortable. Even at this 23 knot speed, you'd really feel that, it'd be banging away at the hull. But our hull isn't even touching it, we're riding it over the top of it. And the foils are just cutting through absolutely calm water. It's a foot below the level of the waves. 
and it should turn it into the shark. So we it will automatically drop you the power. Okay. Then you have to go straight again and it gives you power again. You see? Ah, okay. So I was just trying a bit of a turn there. And he's saying that the computer automatically cuts the power a bit and starts it. So if we straighten up again, it then puts the power back on. But there is a sport mode if you want to feel a bit more like a conventional boat and heel it, it will allow you a, a higher angle of heel. But there is a danger then that you might dip the, the hull into the water and come to a bit more of a dramatic stop. But really, this is just magical. It is that flying carpet that everybody talks about. We're not in the water, we're scooting along, we're skating along above it but it handles and drives just like any other boat. Okay, and we're coming down to a landing. Yeah, what also could happen, now yep. you see we have red lights, yep. we go back to neutral, so we come back to neutral. slow a little bit down, yep. and now it's green again over there. Okay, the yeah, so all there. these little lights. Yeah, we are good to go again. Okay. Also what could happen if the sensors don't deliver um, um, don't a feed. Any feedback yeah, yeah. for one second, the boat automatically will slow down and land. Okay, so it's another safety feature, yeah, just exactly. if they lose the feedback from the sensors and they're not quite sure what's going on, rather than risking doing something whilst you're up in the air, it automatically brings the boat down, lands you nice and safely, and then you can start again. So we'll do that once more because it really is just too much fun. I've never taken off in a boat before. <laughs> I've landed a few, but <laughs> that's because I didn't mean to take off. This is a deliberate takeoff. So we again keep everything straight, bring the speed up a little bit until we're making a bit of headway and then put the throttle down all the way. The bow comes up initially like a normal planing boat until we suddenly take off completely rather than coming over the bow wave, we just rise up above it. That is the most extraordinary feeling. And we've been playing around out here for a little while and we're not holding back on the power, but we've still got 91% battery power, we're doing 23 knots, 25 kilowatts, and using... We started with 97. Yeah, so we've used not even we've used six percent of battery power so we've just come to a pause to show one other thing because we got those big foils underneath the boat the whole boat is incredibly stable for something so small and light so even though there's quite a swell out here it's actually very stable at rest because it acts almost like a sea anchor and locks us in place but you know what that's not the fun part this is the fun part come on let's do it once more got green lights so we start to move forward slowly get a little bit of motion and then let's see if we can get up in the air before this next wake bow comes up and we oh no I didn't like it it was a bit too rough it's a tiny bit too rough at the crucial moment, just when we were trying to take off. So we need to reset, go back into neutral, green lights, start again. It's like asking for permission to take off. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Speak to airport authorities, get permission for takeoff. A little bit of speed up and then put the hammers down. Try again. That's better. Okay, we're beginning to come up now. And now we're flying, there we go. We're up in the air. It's such a different experience. It's, it's somehow familiar and yet completely alien. And it does tilt into the corner a bit, but it's like banking in an aeroplane rather than tilting into a wave or something. But now I just wanted to show you that landing experience again. So we find a nice landing strip again. 
ask for permission to land and ease back and we'll show you what happens. So the stern sinks first, that makes contact with the water and then the front comes down and we're back on, well not terra firma, we're back on the surface of the sea. But that really is the most interesting boat I've driven in a long, long time. The one other experience I have of foiling is on a surfboard, an electric surfboard, and, and that was astonishing too. But to feel it on a boat, and a production boat that you can buy now and go quickly under electric power for a decent range, this is the very first electric boat that I've actually had first-hand experience of proving that that is possible. So this feels to me like a step change in boating history. This feels like this could be the start of electric boating. What a fantastic achievement. Thank you very much for giving me that opportunity.